Take that look of worry. Mine's an ordinary life. Working when it's daylight and sleeping when it's night. I've got no far horizons. I don't wish upon a star. They don't think that I listen. Oh, but I know who they are. And I, I don't mind. That's it. <laughs> I That's wanted it. you to go a little bit longer. <laughs> no, you know what? That's a great track, man. Thanks yeah. for, for opening up the show that way, Antonio. Yeah. You know the track, then. I know what you're talking yeah. about. Yeah, I know. It's good. It's just, it's always nice. Like, obviously, some people sing, and they, I get it right away. Right. And then, but I, I'm always impressed, too, sometimes with the songs. They're like, they take their own little spin on it. Right. Which is kind of cool, but right. um, it's our thing here at The Construction Life. So, it's just nice. like, that's how we started. I just, nice. I don't know. I, I like it. Yeah. I well, like it. I, I love it. And it's 600 plus shows now, and we're going to continue doing that. Awesome. And it's kind of the price of entry to come on the show. Yeah, for sure. Is that, right? For so, sure. Welcome, Antonio. Thank you. Thank uh, you for having we me. We haven't done, yeah, we haven't done a flooring show. Well, this is why, like, I know when I was watching. I've installed, I've spoken to some installers. Right, right. Trim guys that cross over, they'll do it. GCs that do it. But we've never really spoken to, you know, uh, a retailer salesperson that actually handles the whole industry of the flooring, right? Right. And I'm like, let's have this conversation. Yeah. Yeah. No, awesome. I think it's amazing. I think it should be. Like, it's not, for me, for the construction part, I find that flooring is not that sexy or that, I don't know, I just don't find it that out there. You know what I mean? Like, you see other parts of construction, you think it's Flaming. like it's more of a worry than an actual detail because yeah. GCs look at it like if I damage the flooring, then it's on me now kind of mentality. Right, right. But in today's day and age, if you're a GC and you're handling projects and you're not protecting finished material as it's being installed, yeah, then you should be questioning how you're running your ship. True, true. I was from my day one. I was always putting down masonite. I never got onto the train of cardboard. And it was a really simple test for me. Right. I just like, I dropped a screwdriver, you know, tip first. Right. I dropped a hammer, claw first. Right. And, and I'm like, it always went through the cardboard to a point where it left a little mark. Yeah. Or even sometimes worse. Yeah. And whenever I had eighth inch masonite, it never went through. Right. 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 And then it would, it would, it was a pain in the ass because yeah. you had to go to the, the big box stores and you'd buy 50 sheets of eight. And, and that's back in the days when they were like seven bucks a sheet. True. They're, I don't even know what they are now. I think they're 14, 15 yeah, for an eighth inch, right? Around there. Yeah. And then the, you finish a job and you hope you have another job so you can just cart that one to the next one. Right. But that's not always the case. No. So now you got to store all this stuff versus all the cardboard you just put into a bin and it's, gone, it's done, right? I know. But there's that one moment that if someone drops something... It's, yeah. And we've had to. We've yeah. had to replace a board because something happened. We had to do certain things because something happened. Yeah. And it's just... Um, yeah, no, no, we're going to have a good chat. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to this one. I'm and plus, I love the it. name, right? So anything that's associated with Godzilla or King Kong, <laughs> like if you've got a construction business that has King Kong or, or Godzilla in it, you're on the show. That's as it. simple as that, that's man. It. So yeah. Floorzilla, I love the name. Like, uh, where did that come from? You know, it was something that came to me. I was thinking of names and names and it, it it's things. Sticks. It just, I came up with it and I'm like, yeah, it works. It sticks, man. It's yeah. a small store with a big name. Right? But it sticks. Yeah, like you said, for sure. <laughs> Antonio from Florzilla is here. Florzilla.ca. You can find him there all over IG under at Florzilla. His phone number to reach him is 647-671-9871. And the email to get them is Florzilla at Rogers.com. I'm wearing Chris's tea, Dr. Granite. I haven't spoken to Chris in a little while. I know he's been busy polishing stone and he's been doing all kinds of stuff. And uh, he will never reveal his little secrets and for good reason <laughs> yeah. because he's perfected those secrets so sure. he should keep those that's what he's built his business on and he's got a hugely success, successful business and i have right. a lot of respect for him because he brings life back into stone uh and also i'm a natural stone guy right so yeah. i will always skew towards natural stone over quartz or man-made or porcelain right uh i tell people all the time i've done tests before with the other materials and the naturals always held up and the man-made never held up right so it's just i get it but that's a different show. We ain't going to talk about that. Let's get into the world of flooring now. Okay. The, off mic, you were telling me that you've been in the business for a good chunk of time. Yeah, 25 years. Um, you know, worked with an, an, like an awesome company. You know, I don't mind even mentioning them. It's up to you. Uh, Barwood Flooring. Yeah. 
Um, great company. I learned a lot from that company. Like I learned a lot from the owner. Uh, he taught me a lot. Um, never left with hard feelings. Uh, I still talk to them till, till today. Yeah. Uh, a lot of the workers that, that I worked with uh, prior or to the, in the past. Yeah, no, awesome company. I learned a lot. Um, I bounced around after that, after the 18, 19 years I was there. Uh, I went to some other companies, worked in sales, and I said, there's one thing that I'm missing, and that's opening up my own place. I always wanted to do it. But what was missing from your own place that you didn't really see? Doing things my way, right? Doing things, and I'm not saying it's the right way, it's just I wanted to put a different spin on uh, the flooring industry. I find that when it comes to flooring, it's always the repetitive thing. The customer walks in, um, you know, uh, you try to sell them on the highest price possible. I'm doing a different spin on it. I'm bringing it back to the way it was in the old days where you had that, you know, interaction with the customers and where my store is, believe it or not, it's a small town. Yeah. Um, it's growing. But I feel that I have that one-on-one -on -one with that customer now, and that's what I'm trying to bring. I would say it's like it's the purpose behind the product, yeah, instead of the price behind the product. That's right. And I and I get it. Like we're we're in some really stressful yes. economical times yes. right now. Yes, we were in the heyday when when the fiasco was going on not too long ago, and everybody was spending money because they were stuck in their homes and they were deciding like my home is not feeling good, right. which is a translation I'm not feeling good. So let's spend money and change things in our home. Right, but they weren't thinking correctly and i was still advocating for like don't be splurging all this stuff it doesn't yeah. mean that things are all perfectly good that you should be just offloading whatever you have it doesn't work that way no i find now you're getting a lot of purpose behind products right and the reasoning behind them on why you should go this route right which is what you're focusing on yeah like you got a customer coming in you have a conversation let's try to figure it out obviously we could start at different levels you could start at you know the landlord special at the bottom kind of thing right but then also the longevity of it and what you really That's want right. and, and the possibility. And this might happen, I think, because, you know, you and I are coming from, you know, our families are coming from the old world. Right. You got the generational transition going on. Right. Where, you know, I love visiting Europe. And you're seeing a structure that's been through generations. Yeah, that's, it wasn't yeah. built last week. That's right. And decorated last week. That's right. And so I think that's starting to happen a little bit in Canada where, you know, based on our tax and the way things are being set up unfairly to us. Right. We're going to have to consider how much longer can we hang on to these properties yeah. and keep them within the family, which means that you buy a product. Let's say we're going to focus strictly on flooring. Yeah. To refinish that down the line. Right. Or remove it and put something else down the line. That's right. Like you, a lot of people not too long ago were coming into this this landscape of construction going, oh, we're only going to need it for five years because we're going to put a for sale sign. So yeah. it doesn't matter to us. Yeah. yeah. So give me the really, really cheap above yeah. landlord. And you're so right about that. You're so right about that because when it, especially with flooring, like you said, you know, you can refinish it down the line. You could, re nobody thinks like that. I don't, I've never had a client ever speak to me like that. About yeah. That. Never. Yeah. Not once. And I started with floor sanding in the beginning, beginning, beginning. I, I started with floor sanding. Um, yeah. And you know what? It's, it's kind of a dying thing now. It's because everybody's like, no, you know what? I'll put the vinyl down. I'll put this down. I'll put the laminates down because I'm only going to be here for three, four or five years. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like nobody puts that thought anymore into it. It's just, okay, I, I'm going to flip this house so it doesn't really make a difference anymore. And I'm noticing that it's a lot more and more. I mean, now. I'm I'm totally 100% in agreement. If you're building a second unit and you want it to last a long time, I would say don't get the bottom of the barrel. Get some a decent 100%. vinyl flooring. Yes. I wouldn't even lean towards laminate because I find that vinyl is a lot better a product. Yes. And and it looks a lot better. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, it's going to give you the durability of you not trusting whatever tenant, tenant you're going to get into that place. Yeah. Whatever they're going to drop, spill, scratch, all that stuff. Yeah. It already gives you longevity that way. 100%. But yeah. when it comes to your own home, I would encourage clients to think about, I want you to walk around the house barefoot. Right. I want you to understand what it feels like. And if you've got pets, if you've got children, 
get the pets to walk around and determine exactly yeah. how loud, loud those claws are going to sound right. and all that stuff. And yeah. you can get into this whole world about the different woods because I've never, I've never been sold. I've been educated. Yeah. I went down the hardness route when I yeah. got into construction, we started having these conversations about wood hardness and stuff like that. Right. But I'm experienced enough to cut wood and I've cut almost probably almost every species. Right. right. And, a blade still goes through. It doesn't matter what the hardness is, yep. right? Yeah. And so if you drop something on wood, it's still going to leave a mark. Yes. So you have to just be conscious of what you want out of this flooring, yep. right? Yeah. And then there's also, you got to educate yourself about the building science of things too. Yep. Because you get clients that are like, listen, we, we want that pioneer look. We want that two foot wide. Yes. <laughs> Yes. But your house was poorly built. Yeah. And it's not sealed correctly. Right. And your wood moves. Yeah. And and I, I don't recommend you going this wide. As beautiful as it is, yeah. I don't re recommend it. If you really want to go this route, I would suggest we should start doing some Start updates. doing something a little different. So these yeah. are all conversations no. that you have, right? So I yeah. love that you start by purpose, yeah. meeting the people, having a purpose conversation, and then going from there. Yeah. And I, I now I, I find that it's kind of lost now, you know, with a lot people of people don't have the time. They, 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 they don't. Or they, they don't care. Which one? Or both. Uh, maybe both. You know, like honestly. Uh, it's, but it's, it's such a, a big decision. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a quick sale, right? They're looking for that quick sale and like that. Okay. I, they're out of the way now. And now let's focus on the next, the next, the next. And they just don't focus on that one person. I want to bring that back. I think it needed it even way back when, when I even started, because it was always about mass. Let's hurry up. Let's quick, 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 you know? Um, and I just, you know, slow it down a bit. Slow it down a bit. I think any of those decisions that revolve around material that's going to be there for a good chunk of time. Yeah. You should spend your time. In that's effort. right. Don't overspend. Yeah. And don't confuse yourself with noise. Right. Which we'll get into right now. Yeah. About the trends. Right. I've watched in the last 15 years. Yeah. You know, I would say we've gone from a four inch plank 15 years ago. Yes. Possibly the grayish, you know, the, the, the gray brownish Grays tones. Like, yes. Right. That was huge back yeah. then. Huge. And now it's like, I think we've been stuck in a white oak world or a, a black hole of white oak. 100%. And I You're love right. white oak. Trust yeah. me. I love white oak. But right. it's just, there's other woods. Yeah. Like there's other finishes, right? There is. But I guess the trend wise, like where is everybody going these days? It, it's it's still that oak. And the only reason why I say oak is because a lot of the customers don't want to deal with the staircase. Staircases all come oak, right? So they're trying to match it all together. Yeah. Type of thing yeah. where no, you, you don't see much maple staircase. I've done it. It's a pain to stain. That's right. And that's why people shy away from it. Yeah. And they just stick with, you know, they kind of stick with that. And then oak. they can't afford walnut. That's Wal right. Walnut is a too soft. Yeah. It's, you know, beautiful. Different class of client. Listen, I've seen walnut plank flooring installed. It is gorgeous. We've done it. Yeah. It is yeah. beautiful. At the time, almost 20 bucks. Yeah. A square. Yeah. Yeah. It is gorgeous, but soft, right? And yeah. it, if it's in a controlled area, like an office where you know it's going to be yourself using it, like in a, in a den office in your home and you know it's controlled, why not? You know what? Do something different. Why not? But yeah, prices have gone is, down. Have oh, they gone down? Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah? White Oak's reasonable now? White Oak is reasonable. Yeah. Yeah. What's yeah. the runner up to white oak? What are people selecting when they go? Mm, it's a little bit hickory. Out of, hickory, hickory is a good food. I like hickory. It's very underrated. Yeah, very, I totally very believe underrated. Hickory is a beautiful yeah. wood. Yeah, yeah, it's gorgeous. It's beautiful, especially on the floor. Yeah, and you know what? Inexpensive, goes down very nice, maintains very well, just like a white oak would. Someone could correct me if I'm wrong, but I think I read somewhere where the old school desks. In old school schools, old yeah, school, yeah, old school schools were all made out of hickory. I think you're right. The tops are, yeah, and we always carved whatever we wanted yeah. into that, yeah. right? Yeah, it was always a good looking tabletop. Yeah, or that's a desk, right. Right, that's so right. I always kind of liked that. Yeah, uh, I'm pretty sure they're a hickory. That was yeah, no, I think is. you're right. Yeah, I think you're right. So hickory is a good option. Yeah. Huh? And yeah. then what are we, are we still living in a reasonable width plank? Or are we getting extreme? Or are the manufacturers offering extremes? Yeah, they are. I mean, you can go to nine, 10 inch plank. Wow. Yeah, it's, it's, some of it's insane, 
Like it all depends on the area you're putting down. You're not going to come to me with 500 square feet. Right, and you want a ten-inch plank? It no just sense. doesn't make sense. Yeah, right? yeah. If you got just, a big great room, right, makes a lot of sense. Right, open concept, yeah. open spaces. Sure, why not? You want to do something different, you know? It's but I still find sales are more into that six, six, seven. seven. A home built on trust, crafted with care. Your home is more than just a structure. It's where memories are made, where your family grows, and where you find comfort. That's why your renovation or building project deserves nothing less than the utmost care and quality. Because it's not just about creating a space, it's about creating a place where life happens. Tim, the heart and soul behind Ravine View Construction, understands that your home is personal and whether you want to be involved in every detail or prefer to leave it in the hands of a trusted expert, he and his team are here to make your vision a reality. At Ravine View Construction, every project is handled with the passion it deserves, from the initial site assessment to the final touches that turn a house into a home. Tim's team doesn't just build, they protect what matters most. With a reputation built on trust, excellence, and a commitment to using only the best materials, Ravine View Construction ensures that your home isn't just beautiful, it's built to last. Tim and his team work alongside the finest tradespeople guiding you through every step so you always feel confident and cared for. Let them help you create a space where you can enjoy peace of mind, and cherish moments with those you love for years to come. Connect with Ravine View Construction today at 416-671-0170 or visit them at www.rvchomes.ca. For direct inquiries, email Tim at info at rvchomes.ca. Let them build not just a house, but a home filled with lasting memories. This message is proudly supported by The Construction Life. That's where it's it, a reasonable, comfortable yeah. width that fix. It fits a small room. It fits a large room. Yeah. You know, it, it kind of works that way. Yeah. I mean, a different, you know, a, a different way of installing it. I mean, you, you have to glue it. Yeah. Right. You have to you do your staples, your nails, whatever, but you should spot glue it. It, it, it just makes it safer. Well, it, it makes a lot of anything. I would say anything above six automatically yeah. glue. hundred percent. You should just be. Some even glue. do it at five. Yeah. And if yeah. you even, I mean, there's limitations because sometimes you'll do radiant floor, so you can only glue. You can't nail. Correct. Right? But if you're not doing radiant, I would still glue and nail. Yeah. Staple. Yeah. Like it doesn't hurt at all. Yeah. I mean, because the last thing you want is like, I mean, those old houses have a lot of character because of those creeks. Right. But those creeks will get irritating over a little bit of oh, time, 100%. right? Yeah. So you, want, you don't want to hear anything on the floor. Yeah. When it's moving. That's right. That's right. Yeah. What other woods are people looking at these days? What are like, is there a conflict between gcs that handle their own personal projects versus designers handling their clients and trying to convince the gcs yeah the designers is a whole different other ball game. Where, what planet are they living on oh man yeah. it's like yeah like um because i know they're trying to be different right but to change your portfolio just for the purpose of changing your portfolio doesn't yeah. suit the client right this right. is what I have a problem with, yeah. right? Well, I mean, that's where the designer would have to do their homework, right? See where they're at. Some designers won't even listen. They just bring their own um, thing into their, right? And yeah. then if the customer almost feels like, uh, I'm overwhelmed and I don't know. Yeah, I'll do whatever you say because this is your industry. You know what you're doing. Where that sometimes gets into like, you know, weird stuff. Like, like weird flooring, like, um, you know, different shapes and different, some people like that look. All the stuff that's coming out of like, what is it, the Eastern Europe kind of thing? Uh, yeah, it's like that, but yeah, I'm talking about even vinyls because 80%, listen, 80% really? 80 of my sales are vinyl flooring. And believe it or not, and it could be where I'm at yeah. because uh, a lot of the houses are close to the water. Okay. Right. And they- Stability. That's right. It just withstands climate a lot better than, of course, wood will. But it also has, I go back to what I said earlier, it also yeah. goes to the building envelope, it goes to the installation techniques, it yes. goes to a lot of that stuff. So if yeah. you, I want clients and designers to understand that, sure, you want to choose a really expensive material for flooring. Right. Then there's a really expensive cost associated to install that product. 100%. Yep. There is yep. no cheap version yep. of installation on a higher end product. That's and that right. goes across the board to anything in yes. construction. Yes. Right. So yeah. like factor in, you want to buy? Sure. Spend the money there, but you better splurge on the install. Right. 
And the, uh, the education associated with that. That's right. Because then you need the right person to be doing that. Yeah, that's right. Because a lot of guys nowadays, they just don't really know the understanding exactly. behind yes. why is this, um, why is the manufacturing offering up these specs? Right. You know what I mean? Like you got to do all these steps to get this done properly to avoid any kind of issues, right? right. I've right. never had it on any of my job sites where the seasons change and all of a sudden you've got gaps that will take a heel. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it I moves. Mean, I've I've gone to a lot of like deficiencies in 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 homes when I was prior with Barwood and yeah like you see a lot of flooring do its thing right expand contract if it's not controlled area and you know and it'll do its thing right um, I I think not so much with engineered flooring but more with the solid part because at one time that's all was selling was the so I mean but solid okay. Even if you were to sand it, it would take you a hundred years oh, to yeah. get to the point where you have to remove the solid hardwood floor. Oh yeah. And if it doesn't, you're doing something's wrong. Yeah. But like you're either you're sanding it way too yeah. much or I mean they used to sell that, you know, inch and three quarter by three eighths. The classic stuff. red oak. Classic, yeah. right? Uh that okay. Once you, you know, saw the cleat nail heads, that's it. Then you knew that that was yeah, the last time you always had that it. one customer. Can I still sand it? Can I get one more <laughs> sanding out of it? No. Do you like, do you like the glitter all yeah. over the floor? Like the uniform <laughs> glitter right. there? That's right. That's right. <laughs> no, and I get it. And that's that's all of Toronto. That's probably all of Hamilton too. Yes. Right. I'm assuming because yeah. it was all just bred the same way. That's right. And now there's a resurgence going on in Hamilton where they're trying to fix these places up. Right. And it starts to add up because, I mean, all right, what's the average nowadays? What What's the, okay, when it comes to vinyl flooring, how low are we getting? How high are we getting? And what's the basic difference between the two of them? Uh, lowest you're probably getting, you know, dollar ninety nine for like a six mm vinyl. Yeah, you know that's anything lower than a six right now, like a five mm or four point five. Stay away from why they just telling they everybody. don't they'll just start to fall apart. Eventually, down the road, once you walk on it, the clicking system, the more it just either separates, cracks, because it becomes brittle. Really? Yeah, the more you walk on it, it just happens. My suggestion: I mean, six mil is a quarter inch, and they're making product that's thinner than that. Thinner than that. So 4. you're getting 5, close. To, you're five going, mm. Really? Yeah. So you're getting close to like an eighth of uh, three sixteen. That's yeah, yeah. That's thin. I know, and that's why a lot of these companies now they're switching away from that. They're not even making any four point five or five. You could still find it, of course, but I my customers that walk in, I completely don't. I just completely stay away from it. It doesn't make sense. Does You'll it get, get it for cheap. I know, but it does. What's the point of it start to fall apart, right? That now again, that brings us back to you know, I'm I'm just fixing the house up quick, quick, quick because I'm selling it. Let the other guy worry about it because right, yeah. And that's where that falls into. Yeah. But yeah, any customer that really cares and they're putting you know they're putting this out throughout their house. No, stay away from fives. And then Anything how, how much thicker does it get? Like the how you can go from six mm, seven, eight, nine, and ten. They even make a ten mm, a half inch in vinyl. Yeah, really. Yeah, yeah. What's the some, price? On? I've even heard some. They're starting to think of making a twelve. That's what I'm hearing. What's the reasoning behind? Is it just they're adding more cushion? They're adding more stability in yeah, the locking. Like when I say six mm, that's not the whole. Like that, that includes the under pad already attached yeah, to it. Yeah, yeah. They include that under pad attached yeah. to it. Now, but even right? at so 10 or 12 mm, like, I mean, that's it, pretty thick. Oh yeah. That is thick. Yeah. I sell it in my store. I sell a, uh, eight, nine and 10 in my store. So you know what it, it sells, but in some cases it's an overkill. There's no need for it. Yeah. Anything seven and like seven, eight, even nine is fine. Is fine. And all you're of them safe with a seven. Are all of them fully waterproof and water protected? Uh, or they're different degrees? Yeah. Some companies that I sell, they're, most of them are like um, um, water protected. Yeah. Right. But 100% waterproof, there is some companies that make yeah, 100% we, we did a bunky yeah. job a few years back. Yeah. And, and, they supplied everything. So it was all just a kit, right? Right. And then the flooring came up and there was no place to park it safely anywhere to protect it other than just covering it with a tarp. Right. And he just said to us, don't worry about it. If it gets wet, it gets wet. Yeah. And it sure enough, it rained yeah. and, and it got wet. And yeah. he goes, just make sure that when you're installing it, that it's dry. 
Yeah. Simple as that, yeah. right? But even if you ever had a flood for whatever reason, right. and this it was, it was saturated, take it out and then let it dry, put it back in, that's and right. it's done. And yeah. I'm like, that's the impressive part of it. That's where I go back to if you want to, it's almost an upgrade in a, in a landlord if you want to do a second unit, if you want to do a property. Yeah. Because the likelihood of something happening to that extreme it's pretty good. Yeah. So if that's the case, then you know that you can remove all this stuff and then put it back sure. in after it dries, sure. right? Yeah. And I think that's the, be- I mean, listen, if you asked me 10 years ago. No, I've seen it. I've right. seen them. Vinyls? I know. No. I, I tell customers all the time. If you asked me 10 years ago, vinyl, I would I would not even look at it. But nowadays they've gotten so much better at the work they've done. Uh, yeah, no, it's great stuff. Why are people choosing the vinyls for throughout the house? What's the reason? Is it for cost. the dirt? Is it cost oh, really? Oh, 100%. One, cost and longevity, right? Like it'll last much longer than your woods, depending on how you're using the yeah. floor. I mean, yeah. uh, you know, it all depends on how you use it, of course, but price is the main, the main thing. But yeah, then because they, I mean, you're looking at, this is, I'm speaking on more on what I experienced that I find that price comes, especially nowadays, price is big. It's just price. Yeah. Like I can't even imagine you selling much solid wood. No. Planks, right? No. Listen, this just since I've been open, I think I sold maybe a total of 2,000 square feet of solid wood. What, what just, species was it? Uh, oak. Oak? Yeah. And it's only because they're trying to... Um, they're they're trying to match up to something that they have existing oh, in their home, why, yeah. right? And they want to keep it that you know the solid material. So that's that's basically it. I'm waiting for. I don't know how they would pull this off. Would vinyl ever create an inlay looking product? Oh, they're they're coming up with subs every day. Really, yeah. every day. There's so they're actually working new. on something like that, oh, where geez. it'll look like inlays. Really, yeah. I I uh, was prior to opening up. I was working with a company that sold uh, vinyl that looked identical to uh, carpet tile. There were people. I literally have it down some of it in my shop now. What well, it it actually had? Like, I mean, this is carpet tile in here. Yeah, these are squares that are in here. Yeah, so basically, it looks identical to this. Identical. But and, it doesn't have a vinyl. hair to it. Does it have a texture to it? Uh, yes. It's got a rough... They had to make a texture to it or else it becomes too slippery. Huh. And people were complaining about that. And so they came up with something that... Something new. And it's like rigid on top. It looks... People come... They come into my store. They see it. And they're like, is that carpet? Is that carpet? It looks identical. It's like what? 16 by 16 or something? Like uh, it's a 24 by 24. And they're clicked on two sides. No oh, clicks. Once. No clicks. No click. This is glue down. Glue down. Yeah. So like, pretty much like how you would put a carpet tile down, yeah. this is how you would put that down. Is that the future? Is that where we're headed? Um, it could be. The thing is with carpet, uh, if you like carpet, you're going to stick with carpet. Of course. Right? So even though you got a vinyl that looks like carpet, that's great. But I still like the warmth, the look, yeah, the feel yeah, yeah. of that carpet. Yeah. So it, it, it's hard to transition between one and the other, right? It, 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 it's harder. More in commercial areas where like, um, I don't know, like big areas where hospitals yep. or and they want that different look yeah. and they can clean it easier because let's face it, I mean, carpet tile, it takes a bit harder to clean if you spill Pain something. Yeah. yeah, it is 100%. Yeah. Yeah, I guess that would be the second factor is like you start talking about the price point wise and yeah. then just the maintenance of it. That's right. Keeping it clean. Keeping that's right. It, like they want simplicity attached that's right. to it, right? Yeah, that's right. Wood flooring or the carpet options or stuff like that. Or like, I don't think anybody's buying shag rugs these days. Not, it's just clean, right? Yeah, not that much. I mean, it all depends on where they're putting it down for rugs or, or even carpet right? Especially in the area where I'm at. If you're doing a basement, people shy away from putting carpet in a basement. And That would make you know, no sense. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that's why it's just... I bring up the inlay thing is because, I mean, you'll get into older homes, older structures, and they all had them. Like, they had beautiful inlays. Yeah. We knew at the time, I mean, your hourly rate for a tradesperson would have been, I don't know, 4 or $5 an hour or something yeah. like at the time, right? Yeah. Nowadays, to do inlays, I can only imagine. I've never done it on a job. I've always wanted to. It's tedious. It's, yeah, it's, it's very tedious yeah. and expensive, and it's yeah. got to be done correctly, right? That's right. 
and you need right. and probably there's only a handful of people in each city that know how to do it properly. that know how to do it and that's just it right yeah yeah so it's it becomes a challenge at that point are you still are you offering something or you can't no i i can yeah. I, I know the people that can do it right it's just not used that much right anymore it's just not uh but yeah i i actually know a guy that actually does uh like engraving and inlay type of thing on vinyl on vinyl on vinyl so he'll carve out like let's say you want your name or somebody wants something different in their kids room or something right and he'll do it and he'll water do jet it. he'll just yeah yeah and, and it then you choose a different color you know, i've seen it it looks amazing really yeah what's he charging amazing. per square uh that's basically plus it, the yeah. setup or whatever yeah. it is yeah kind of makes sense eh? yeah because you can start doing a certain kind. You could be doing your study, your man cave, your home theater. Yeah. You could do a bunch of stuff. Yeah. No, it looked really, really And what's he doing? So he's cutting it out, cutting out the negative and the positive, and then he puts them together and back glues them or something? That's right. Okay. That's right. Or like, let's say somebody, because I've seen somebody that put their name or they put something like uh, home is where the whatever, on their stairs. Yeah. So each plank that's yeah, going down yeah, their yeah. stair, their riser, they would put some some words on. It really looks I've done different. it before. I've done it in, in actual tile mosaic. Oh, really? And, yeah. And that was a pain in the ass. So, yeah. yeah. And it was just the same thing. It was oh, just I a bet. water jet application, positive, negative. Yeah. And then you just, uh, he gave you the piece and he glued it yeah. all back and that was it. Yeah. And then you, I mean, it was, it wasn't cheap. Experts in smart home technology. Why settle for anything less than a home technology service company that truly understands flawless Wi-Fi, unparalleled security, and immersive whole home entertainment? Andrew is the driving force behind Uplink Smart Homes. He isn't just an industry expert. He's a visionary who creates smart spaces that resonate with your lifestyle. In today's connected world, clients demand more than just speakers and routers. They want an integrated system that seamlessly blends technology with the fabric of their home. Andrew and his team are dedicated to turning your home into a hub of innovation, where every device, network, and system works in harmony to enhance your daily life. At Uplink Smart Homes, they specialize in designing and installing cutting-edge smart home systems tailored for your unique needs. From optimizing Wi-Fi coverage for flawless connectivity in every corner of your home to implementing healthy home options like circadian rhythm lighting. Their solutions are both high-tech and user-friendly. They also create whole home entertainment setups that deliver stunning audio-visual experiences, whether you're streaming your favorite shows or hosting a movie night. Andrew's approach goes beyond simply installing equipment. It's about truly understanding their clients and designing a smart home that caters to them. Contact Uplink Smart Homes today at 289-240-0600 or visit them at www.uplink.ca. For inquiries, email them at admin at uplink.ca. They guarantee that smart home technology will make your life better, but only if it's done right. This message is proudly supported by The Construction Life. Now I don't I know. even know. That was a long time ago. I, I can't remember. What it, I think the, maybe the for one phrase... It was about maybe three or four feet wide, long, and then yeah. about a foot high. I think was close to a thousand bucks. Wow, yeah. In stone, right? Yeah, Supplying the material. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then he did it and then he had to assemble it and put it all together. And it was about a thousand bucks to do that one yeah. little piece, right? So yeah. I'm sure it's reasonable now, more reasonable than that, to do it with the wood, right? I with the would vinyl. think so. I would think so. I don't I it's not something where like if somebody wanted it, I can do it. I you can have the, get you it have somebody that yeah. you can connect yeah. it with, yeah. right? Yeah. Are we finally done? Uh, I shook my head when I started seeing this trend years ago, putting flooring materials on walls. Are we done with that? Uh, or are people still doing it? People are still doing uh, it. Not as much anymore. Maybe something a bit different where it's very similar to what you got here, right? Where they're just putting different patterns yeah. now, yeah. And, right? Just to add but something But they were literally different. taking boards. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <laughs> either I know. gluing it on the drywall yeah. or nailing it on the drywall yeah. trying to hit the studs yeah. and i was like you're right at one point uh, it was like massive it was big right? it looks yeah. like flooring on a wall that's yeah. what it looks like it doesn't look like anything else it doesn't like this doesn't look like flooring on a wall no and that's what this is this is everybody's doing this now they're well, all this, trying to figure out yeah. different ways of doing things well, you know how it is right what's in today is gone tomorrow type yeah. thing it's really quick right and then things go out dated quick so i I'm always the believer. Keep sometimes just keep it simple because then if you find like grays, I remember at one point like we were you were talking about everybody wanted gray. 
It was insane. And now everybody's like, I can't take it anymore. It's all light colors it. now? Yeah, it's more like light, you know. I still like like wheat colors. Okay. You know what I mean? So like they're going lighter warms. Yeah. Gray was feeling too cold for them? Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Because it just, like, everybody had it. And then everybody started noticing, you know what? That person down the road has it. That person down the road has it. And, and it just, it got too much. It just got too much, right? Everyone keeps forgetting it's your house. Yeah. Individualize it, man. Yes. Make it for you and your family. Yes. And and that's your house. Do it that yeah. way. But too too many people are stuck with the for sale sign. Yeah. Too many people are worried if we're going to even be here for the next five years. That's right. But I mean, but then what happens is you get that. I had I had an interesting conversation last week with Jim, and he was talking about this yellow house that he built in Etobicoke, mm. Cape Cod style, and he chose yellow for the siding oh. with white accents on the exterior, right? Right. And it stood out in the neighborhood. Yeah. But everybody came up to him. And they're like, it was either two schools of thought. You had the old school Italian Europeans going, what's the matter with you? This should be stucco. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or this should be brick. Right. And then you had the other school of people coming in going, I can't believe how beautiful this looks. Yeah. Because it stood out, but it it felt like a home. That's right. Right? And That's and he right. took the risk and, and he did it. And he sold it for a very pretty penny when he was ready to sell it. Oh, nice. Because whoever wanted it understood the value behind that yeah and he individualized that house you yeah. know it catered his own personal touch but whoever moved in there didn't do anything and right. it was really funny i think we we chatted about he built that 25 years ago i think it was and it was about two or three years that someone finally bought it and then they started upgrading the kitchens and the bathrooms and mm. that was it but they left everything else yeah there yeah. So he was ready, and, and then he was asked if he wanted to do the reno, and I think he got involved to do the reno. Right. And it was like, it got me questioning about how many contractors today are going to have to go back into a project that they did right. to redo it again for right. a new client or the same client that wants to upgrade, right? Right. Because you get a lot of the younger generation here that don't even experience that opportunity. Yeah. And that's part of the industry. You sure. stay long enough, you'll get that opportunity. Yeah. But I mean, yeah. like, I loved it. Like, when I saw the yellow, it, it made sense to me. Or, or yeah, like when you... Like I visited Miami about a year and a half ago and the different colors and everybody's different. And it's just, you know, we just got to add more of that. I believe that here, right? Just be different. Like don't follow suit to everybody but else. But everyone's right? nervous about selling yeah. the house later on or they're going to not get the right buyer. Yeah. But I swear to you, you, you walk into these houses, they're all the same. Yeah. They're all the same. Yeah. Like I can I can almost tell you that most of the kitchens are shaker style doors. Yeah. yeah. I can tell you that the flooring is pretty much very similar in style. Right. You know, countertops are very similar and chosen of whatever tones. That's are. right. When I go to fabrications, I'm like I'm in awe of certain like ten years ago I was seeing leathering going on the stones and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. And and it was dark stones. Yeah. And you were like going, That's that's absolutely stunning, beautiful, right? Right. Yeah, yeah, but nobody this is a one off. Nobody's ever gonna want to buy this as a for their own personal house because whoever it is gonna be, they're gonna think it's too dark, it's right. too uninviting. Right. I'm like, you're hundred percent wrong. Yeah. I get it. Everybody wants to be safe. Yeah. And that goes for like I think that's it. Safe. Safe. Yeah. But then it's boring and then yeah. they try to liven up their property yeah i guess with the decorating components associated with the, the house right so that's where the colors will go in or something like but the problem is that that those same people will end up at home sensor winners and they're all buying the same thing yes you know and then you're like going everyone's home is looking the same thing you just bought this barn board kind of signage yeah you bought these little things that you're going to plan around the house it all looks the same to me that's right it's almost like pinterest and house just threw up yeah and, yeah and you're that's like right why don't you just individual? that's right like, i mean like who you are as a person that's right who you are as a couple who you are as a family yeah like put that into and that's the home. that's that's what i want to see like when when customers come through my door right that's what i want i want pick what you don't worry about the trend like you get a lot of customers what's the trend now don't worry they about that. that yeah don't worry about that. You know what I mean? We're, see what you like, what fits in your home. And flooring is hard. It's hard to pick sometimes with colors because, you know, at one time when we were younger, you had maybe what? Five, six, seven choices? Three and a half inch oak. Yeah. Color. Kind of honey color. Yeah. Or you went to the espresso color. That's right. Those are the two options. Yeah. Now, oh my God, it makes it really hard. 
for, for a homeowner. Yeah. That, and we're versed into this industry, so yeah. we kind of have an understanding of like, okay, get rid of options one through ten. We don't care. Right. Let's look at eleven and twelve and get rid of the rest of them, and that's it. But right. a homeowner looking at twelve. 20 different options. You're yeah. Like, what am I supposed to decide? Where am I supposed to decide? It's so hard. It's it, And I don't blame them. Like, it really, really makes it hard for them to choose. Like, I got cust- liter- literally a customer two days ago. She brought like seven, eight samples home, you know, to, to check them. Were they all in the same family? Yes. <sighs> you know, and it's, you know, it, it all... And, and I don't blame them because it, they make so many shades. One off, one here, one there, one... It's like wow, it's too much for the you know for the customer. Different manufacturers, is that what it was, or was it actually yeah, yeah? You had uh, like three different manufacturers. So they all looking at their book, their catalog, and they're like, okay, well, we need the honey warm. Yeah, we need the espresso dark. We need something in between. Right, but we, we don't need- want to copy that yeah. guy. So we'll maybe make it a little bit like this, and we'll make it. It just makes it really, really, really hard for the customer. I, I had a guy reach out um through youtube he was like do you remember the name of this brick on this house that you built right and and i for some weird reason it was a canada brick and i remember the name being marshall and it was actually a really nice reddish hint of purple in it yeah ontario size classic toronto brick right so i was like i was ready to type out the reply saying it was marshall canada brick and then i went on to canada bricks website and i was looking for it Mm. and i couldn't find it so i can just assume they discontinued it right and so then there was three other ones that were very similar to each other and similar to it right the one that i thought so then that's how i responded i was going listen i'm assuming it was marshall i could be a little bit off on the name but i'm pretty sure it was called marshall yeah and it was ontario size and but on their website, I can't find Marshall, but here's the three that are very close to it and had the same tonality in yeah. it. And I go inquire to those ones now, but I just didn't understand why, if they did con- discontinue it, why they would have done that because you had people that wanted to use it again. Wanted that. Brick is a little bit, but even like you said, homeowners will still do remodel and they don't want to rip out the front half of the house. That's right. They want to integrate. And I've seen the specialists. When you yeah. get flooring guys that integrate it, yeah. and it looks like it's just... yeah. That's hard. I find that with more with tile. Yeah. Tile is like tile is, turnaround is insane. Is it like available so, next week? And yeah. You're like, uh, no, we discontinued that. It it's is been a crazy. week. Crazy. I don't understand that. It is crazy. Tile is so hard to deal with. There's no point in looking at batch numbers anymore. No. No. And keeping you're a so note right. of it. There's you're no so like. Right. What's the point? Because it, they're not going to carry it again. It's like. This vein, you know, the different than that one, that one. No, it's gone. It's not, you can't get that no more. Now it's this type or this color. Oh my God. It's the turner. It's just incredible. Do you, incredible. speaking of which, do you get into that world on the floor, on the tile? Tile, yeah. Yeah, you got tile in yeah, there as well too. Tile, yeah. 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 How not, is that market? Not too much of it, but I do sell tile. Uh, and it's, like I said, it's really hard to deal with because of that reason. Right where a customer comes in and like, can I still get this type of tile? Mm, sorry, you can. Now it's this type or this look. And it's like, oh, you got to be kidding me because they've already installed it. And like you said, they want to keep it consistent throughout, right? They installed it in one room and they want to continue or they, they want to just continue put it in a different with, room? Yeah, like in, um, they want to keep it consistent. Like, it, oh, we should have done the bathroom at the same time. And it kind of flows into each other from the front door, like the front yeah, entrance. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. We should have done it. We didn't do it. We waited. We were dumb. Now we want to do it, and we can't find that look. And, you know, it makes it, it it's hard. But I, I want clients to understand that each room should have its own individual style. Like, you don't necessarily need to bring the same. You don't. But then there's the big question about running flooring through the kitchen or from the kitchen to the rest of the house. Right. And I've never, and I, I'll continue to speak this. Yeah. I don't think hardwood flooring, wood in a kitchen makes any sense to me. You know, I'm sorry. It's because we're we're brought up in that because right. Chop Listen, up. we've been to family yes. get-togethers and prepping of food and cleaning up everything. That's right. And half of the stuff ends up on the floor. That's right. And and it's it takes a beating. Yes. And I've been into people's homes where kitchens. It, yeah. You see the sink, you see the stove, and you see the fridge in the prep area. Yeah. And that's where the most worn out yes. areas of the flooring are when it comes to wood. Yeah. In tile applications or stone applications, I've never seen any wearing out going on there. Yeah. Yeah, the the European, yeah, you, you'll you always see that where they'll have tile in their kitchen. But now, you know, it, it, it was funny when I was with Barwood, I would notice 
south of the 401, you would see flooring throughout their kitchens. <laughs> That was right? the line? Yeah, that was the line. <laughs> and then north. You, the you go north, <laughs> it's all right? Tile. And you started noticing the <laughs> tile. And it was so weird. Here's so the question. Weird. You've got an open mud room on your main floor. Yeah. And you're putting hardwood. I guess yeah. south of the 401 is putting hardwood into a laundry room? E, or, no, they're or, putting no, tile. They, but a different, like they would put like... um um that stone look yeah so okay yeah you know what i mean the wood stone right yeah yeah, yeah. Th- which i i'm not a huge fan of but i mean that's another room that gets a lot of wear and sure. tear water comes out of the the washer sure and, like it doesn't make any sense no it me, doesn't man. you're right i always you're and right. then you get the argument about thresholds and i was like listen you get a good installer you know that knows what they're doing yeah you don't necessarily need the thresholds you can leave the spaces on the other three walls there so there's some flexibility yeah but it goes back to how the house was built you need right. to assess how the house was built that's right if you got like holes everywhere yeah and you're just letting drafts going on then that's a different story right. then you got bigger problems to begin with that's right but i've never had any of my projects fail yeah and i've never used thresholds because I, I just i never remember the days of going to Home Depot where you had two options for thresholds. Yeah. For shower thresholds. Right. You either went the marble gray right. or you went the cream marble. Yes. That's yes, it. That's it. But my tile is black. What am I supposed to use, oh, right? Gee, that's that's your choices. Those yeah. are the two choices that you yeah. have, right? Now there's a bigger choice on on those kinds of things, but yeah. now you get people doing all custom stuff with the tile. Yeah. Which is where the skill set comes in. That's right. With all the installers, right? That's right. Oh, that's a hundred percent. Yeah. But these 100%. are all conversations that homeowners need to have, right? Like yeah. Um, yeah. And it's taking, this is the thing, right? It's taking time with those customers, right? You and find that when they come in, they're in a hurry to get out. Attention, aspiring tradespeople and entrepreneurs looking to break into the skilled trades or start your own home service business. Meet trade links consulting your go-to partner for success at trade links consulting. They're passionate about helping you find the right trade, build your business, and mentor the next generation. Whether you're exploring your options or ready to take the plunge, they offer tailored career consulting and startup guidance to get you on the right track. Visit them at www.tradelinkconsulting.ca today and book your personalized strategy session. Your future in the skilled trade starts here. This message is proudly supported by The Construction Life. Or they don't want to give up the time that is really needed. Not really. No, No? actually, especially where I'm at, they they actually want to be like, sit down, talk, you know, listen, coffee and, you know, and and that's why if you're going to be that type of person, because they feed off how you are, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. If you're going to be that type of person that I'm in a hurry, I got something else to do, I got somebody else calling me, then, right? I believe that when you're with that person, you be with that person. Yeah, focus. Focus. Focus on what they want. Is it Listen the majority of husband and wife coming in or is it majority yeah yeah okay yeah and always of course the wife still makes that decision no, no, that, that's fine it doesn't, it doesn't yeah. but i mean it's nice to have the the bouncing board right 100 percent. it's like what do you think of this because both. i i think both of them will bring both good yep. inquiries regarding 100%. the yeah. selection right yeah. what they're talking about yeah. and again it goes back to the family dynamic yeah dog kids durability what's the function of the rooms yes. things like that so you want both people saying well this will be easy to clean. This will be easy to wreck. This will be easy to fix. This will be, like, you have to have these conversations. With our, and and you touched on it, with, with our busy lifestyles now, with, like you said, pets, kids, that's why I think vinyl is so popular right now. Yeah. For that reason, because, you know, the old, the, I, I don't have time to worry about that part in my house, the flooring which gets used the most. It just does, right? So that's why they say, let's put that vinyl down and I don't have to think about it. I don't have to worry about my kids spilling something or dropping something. I'm a character guy. Yeah. Like I, I'm sure that you probably have seen this video on social media of a woman that wanted to refinish her stairs. And there was one particular step that her dog who just recently passed away always slept on. And that dog wore out that one step right. more than the other steps. Right. So she was having a conversation with the contractor about, what do you want me to do about this? Like, we're going to be refinishing all these steps here, but do you want me to 
refinish this one step. Yeah. And she came up with a really good, with the contractor solution, they refinished the border and they left the inside part of it. Oh, the marks. And oh. then they put a little plaque there as a memory towards the dog oh, that was with nice. them for so long. Yeah. And so that's why I'm big on character where even in my house, there's areas in my house from my dogs that have wrecked the wood. Right. And I have no interest in my head about fixing those planks because it's a reminder of the pets. I like character in a house. A house is supposed to get worn out. And it's part of it. You're so right. And, and you're right. That's, it's just being lost now because, you know what I mean? Replace it. People don't think of it. They just replace it. They don't think of that anymore. But I go they back just... to the old school European where you walk in and you're like, I was a teenager when I first walked into this house. I'm a grown up in my own family now and I'm walking yeah. into this house. And this house still looks exactly the same. They've repainted it maybe once or twice. Right. But the, the paint color is very similar to what it was always like. Yeah. And it's still probably the same appliances because they've been maintained and taken care of. That's right. And I just like, I like, there's something to say for character being left in homes. Yes. And you can upgrade things in your home, yep. but still keep the true essence of character. That's right. Yeah. And that's what I think I agree with you. And I would probably yeah. say south of the 401 is characterless. Yeah. And I would say more yeah. north of the 401 is yeah. in, because you're fighting the old school mentality. Yeah. Because, you know, for, for really good sakes, the older gen are still hanging around and they still have a say. Sure. You know what I mean? Like that yeah. makes no sense. And I think that it's also the same mentality on why there's always two kitchens in these homes. Yeah. You know, there's a kitchen in the basement, there's a kitchen upstairs, yeah. right? There's a kitchen that we use and the kitchen that is photographed. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> right? right. That's right. And that's just how it is, yeah. right? Yeah. But I, right. we, we had those conversations. I'm always having those conversations where you have the extra rooms and and you have durability, functionality, yeah. and, but you still want it to look nice. And well, I've always, I'm surprised that clients will come back at me after I present the options and we split it. We yeah. split the flooring. Yeah. They know they want the durability of some sort of stone material in the kitchen area. Yeah. And then they want the beauty of the hardwood in the other areas, right? right. And we've done that. We've gone like... I was mixing six mil porcelain slabs right up against, uh, you know, eight inch wide uh, walnut floor. Yeah, yeah. And it looked beautiful. Yeah. And, and we made it so then, you know, they were both the same level. That's right. So it was not a stumbling block where you were kind of just walking from one area. You were just walking right into each other. Yeah. And it was simple as that. It just flowed. Yeah. And that's the purpose. That's why I go back to what I said earlier about walk around your, your house barefoot. Yeah. And just get a sense of what it is to um, walk around yeah. barefoot, right? Yeah. And you'll you'll understand the value of choosing what materials you're choosing. Yeah. And I think that's what's important. People most of the time will just get the samples that you give them. Yeah. And they look at light. Yeah. Turn the lights on, honey. Yeah. Let's see what Mother Nature is going to look like in the morning with this, in the midday, and in the evening. I'm like, why are we looking at yeah. flooring? I think we should be feeling it, too. Yeah, True. True. But yeah. they don't do that though. No, because it's it's something. It's got to go with my walls. It's got to go with the dress. It's, it's got to go, go with the couch, the couch yeah. right? Go, I know. So it that's where it, it, that comes. That's that's a part of it. Too. What's the first thing they do when they're fully furnished? The house is done. They have their first function. Nobody pays attention to it. Right. Floor. Yeah. Nobody pays attention yeah. to it. They pay well, attention to the conversation that's had. That's hey, right. They pay attention to the family get together. Yeah. That's they take right. pictures. You don't see pictures being taken where the camera's being. No, I know. I <laughs> it know. doesn't go down to I the know. floor. Yeah. It goes down to the whole environment, yeah, right? It works. Right. That's but right. I, I, these are all things that I notice, but clients don't always no. think about. Yeah. So you just got to present it to them and then let them make their own informed that's decision right. from that I point. think the generation has changed dramatically right because now you're watching shows on you know there's every show on tv of designing and everybody has their own way of putting a spin on things and that's where you know they would rather listen to them like you said than the old style what's the European. lifespan of a trend like in the flooring world if something's really hot today at what point is well, it going to die? I think die? grays lasted for... They lasted a long time. They lasted quite Probably a Probably a bit, decade. Or, yeah. I would say a decade they right? lasted. Now, it all depends... Because it all depends on what type of floor, right? Because tile, like I said, changes quickly, right? So tile might not even be lumped in with vinyls or flooring or... Th that, that's like a separate thing altogether. Yeah. 
But yeah, I don't know. I mean, Gray's lasted a while, like a long time. And it so. feels like the oaks are kind of hanging out. It's probably going to be going on about six or seven years now. Yeah. Easily. Yeah. That's like the number one discussion. Yeah. Maple point. was always, it was there, but never really caught on 100%. You know, the maple. People didn't like and, the grain? It's got a wider grain. Yeah. They just didn't like the look. And like, like you mentioned before is how it takes the stain and yeah, if you're doing site finish doing maple site finish, that's a different oh, world yeah. man like i've i've yeah, seen I've it gone that. bad yeah blotchy. i've seen it gone uh, good where it was basically pure luck we just didn't know how right. it worked out yeah and and that was given to the client we're going listen we understand you're saving a whack yeah but there's always this risk on this yes. especially i think it was more difficult with the darker stains Yes. We just didn't know what, how it was going to be treated. That's right. But I mean, even in my days, I messed around with staining poplar. Because yeah. I couldn't afford walnut yeah. when I was building a headboard. Yeah. And I was like, let me just give this a go. And it worked out. Sure. Did, would it have worked out all the time? I don't know. Yeah. Poplars, sometimes you'll get an extreme greenish right. one. That's you'll right. You'll get an extreme light one. Yeah, that's right. And I don't even know. I was conscious of choosing similar uh, tones yeah. of wood that I was using yeah. and it worked out. Yeah. It did work out and people see it and they're like, that kind of looks like walnut. And I was like, yeah, kind of, but yeah. it's not. It's like a hit and miss type of thing, right? It's a Where, risk. You know what I mean? Yeah. You stain it. Hey, you know what? This actually looks good or this looks like crap, right? It's either one or the other. There was a period of time when I was like, I was staining everything. I was taking engineer wood. Yeah. I was taking laminate, like compression uh lvls and i was taking all that and i was just staining just experiment and tried yeah. it you'd be amazed at some of that stuff that paralam beam stuff yeah even though it's like waterproofed and everything like that right once you kind of op sand it and open it up a little bit and yeah. you just you you doused it with stain yeah it took it pretty good it was a different kind of look right would it work for a whole piece i'm not exactly sure but i was messing around with all kinds mm. because i was just curious sure you always have leftover stain for projects oh, or things yeah. are going on so you're like let me just try this out i want to yeah. try this out and see how it would work that's right but it's nice yeah. to experiment that way sure but then we go back to the flooring and everyone's like let me be safe yeah i want to choose that because my yeah. neighbor has it my girlfriend has it my co-workers and have it more now than ever because money the times, the economy, they don't want to take that chance. I want to play it safe. I want to spend the money, right? I'll spend, you know, uh, I won't spend too much. I'll spend the money, but it's got to be what I want to play it safe because I don't want to make that mistake. Because if it goes bad, then, right? then what? That's right. Like that's a big, then what? Yeah. The change, right? That's right. And that's why I tell customers, hey, you feel, I want you to be 100% sure on the flooring you choose. Cause it's not something like you put it down, you put all your no, furniture no, on no, it, no, like no, no, it doesn't we go. Don't like it, yeah. Take the samples, look at it in the light underneath your light in your environment, because every light's different, right? So yeah, Mother Nature light, artificial light, different times of day. That's right, and and it's it. Um, installer wise, are you guys offering the installers? Yes, or, yes. I got guys. contractors that work underneath me. All and over the GTA? Yeah, pretty much. Or focusing much. most on the northern no, side? No, they, they pretty much go everywhere. Wherever they're told to go, they'll go. They have no problem with that, especially nowadays. How are they these days? Trade. Because, I mean, I've said it over so many times. I can't do one trade as a full-time gig. Yeah, I know time. what you mean. I would go ballistic. Believe it or not, the guys that work under me, they, they do, like, contracting. Okay. It's not their, their bread and butter. They're not just not, doing flooring. No. Okay, all no. right. And I actually wanted that. Right, where they do everything, where if something else comes up, like, uh, I don't know, um, the Joyce's underneath, they know exactly what they're dealing with, right? Not that they come back to me and say, well, your installer's looking at, looking at me like I got three heads because he doesn't know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. So that's why I aimed for that, right? The contractors. And I've, I've known them now for a while and they're good guys. They're good guys. Yeah, yeah. they're really good guys. And then how's the market right now? I guess it's busy. Is, is it busy for people or is it still slowing down? It's, it's, I, I find that it's still busy. It's yeah. not, yeah, it's, it's, you know, the sales part of it may be slowed down a little bit, but other than like the guys are pretty much steady busy. So, yeah. But people are on. just really conscious of the dollar being spent. That's yeah. all it is, right? Yeah. Oh, when COVID was going on, that was insane. Like people were selling like crazy because people that. were staring at their homes. They had nowhere to go. Yeah, I don't understand. Right? But they were willing to pay so much. Yeah. And then the, the, the 
I guess the the lack of product availability. Like right. That was that whole thing. So yes. I mean, it was it was good for certain manufacturers because they got to offload higher end product. Yeah. Right. Because it was already available. That's right. So it's like okay, they if you want to spend they can, two yeah. three dollars more a foot, you I've got. 10,000 square feet of this. Yes. And you guys can take that if you want yes. right now. Otherwise, you're going to wait months to get this, right? Yes. That's that's where the advantage was during that time, that's which right. was kind of a nice cleanup of warehouse, right? That's right. That's all it was, right? Yeah, that's right. Attention homeowners and businesses. Are you looking for top-notch electrical contracting services you can trust? Consider the expert tradesperson behind Effect Electric LTD. They take pride in delivering quality, service, and professional installation on time and on budget. From Kohler generators to main service upgrades or network data installation, they do it all. With years of experience and a commitment to excellence, Carlo and his team at Effect Electric LTD are your go-to professionals for all your electrical and generator needs. Effect Electric LTD is an authorized Kohler home energy generator dealer. Kohler has air cool 26 RCA units, the quietest, the most powerful, and exceptionally durable generator with 109 amps max power on liquid propane. Custom color options, camouflage options, and every generator Kohler makes is built to last and is equipped with a commercial grade engine. Call Effect Electric LTD today at 416-508-7725 or visit them at effectelectricltd.kohlergeneratordealer.com. Let's build something great together. This message is proudly supported by The Construction Life. What's the most expensive flooring you've ever seen, sold, installed? It was, this is way back when, but it was a olive it was an olive tree flooring. Somebody got it shipped over from Italy. What did it look it was like? Italy. It was very, it almost looked very similar to your back wall there. Really? Yeah. That dark of a it, tone? It, it had that dark of a tone and naturally, really? not stained or anything like that, oiled. Not, but when you touched it, very oily. So you ha literally had to wear a mask when to you install? were, to, to when you're cutting it because there was like little shards of like, like the wood that when you cut it, like the sawdust was really, really bad. Like if you went in your throat, it's like, I, I remember that I've floor. It was, it was beautiful looking, but very oily to touch. How wide of a plank? Oh, it was like a two, two and a quarter, two and a half. And how expensive was, are we talking about here? It was like 16, 17, 18 dollars. How a far back? Foot. Oh, this is way back. Like this is like, oh, 2010, 2009. I can only imagine what it would look like. Yeah. It would be stupid expensive. It was something interesting. Like, it was really, really. Because olive doesn't grow fast. No. So no, and that's. For you to harvest it. Yeah, and that's probably why it costs so much, right? Yeah. You know, so. You know, you have your different types of woods, like, you know, Brazilian cherry. That was big at one time, way back when. I remember know. the, like, the Merbaus, the Jatobas. Yeah. yeah. You know, like, like um, a lot of the Brazilian, South American, those kinds of woods. They're good. They're good. They just change color, like, crazy. Yeah. Like, I remember early in the days, like, what was it, Tiger Wood? Yeah. Was it, but Tiger Wood, where was Tiger Wood coming from? Was it also Brazilian or South American? Uh, South American. So it says it had a funny South thing American. with sun, right? When UV yeah. touched it, it would just change. Or right? if you had an aerial rug and you decided to move that, forget it. Because you would see really it. really weird. Yeah, it was a weird, it, it was a nice pattern, but it was very different, the pattern. Yeah. Like one board would be almost like, this ain't even the same wood. Just like, where's this from? Yeah. No, that's all tiger wood, right? Yeah. And I just, yeah, I remember all those and then people were buying into that, but. And again, see, that's where people were trying to be different. Right? I want something like different. I don't want, but then everybody started getting into bamboos. Bamboos became big at one time and then just. That completely. was a car crash. When yeah. I, when I saw bamboo hit our market. Yeah. I'm like, there's going to be major problems with this. Yes. I'm sorry, but bamboo, I can't remember the last time I saw a bamboo tree or, you know, in Canada. Like yeah. They're, they're not here. No. So, right? They're designed no. for a different climate. Right. And then everything was harvested somewhere else. Everything was manufactured somewhere else. And now you're bringing it to this climate. Yeah. It's 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 going to do its and thing. And it became a nightmare. Yeah. And everybody was buying into that. And, and I didn't like, it had such a repetitive pattern. 
Yes. It didn't matter how you installed yeah, it. Yeah, that's right. It was just a repetitive pattern. That's and I right. was like, when I looked at it as a whole, yeah. a room not dressed, I'm like, visually, this is not doing anything for me. The only way you can get away from that was the strand woven. When yeah. They, when they would mix and, yeah. you know, like all woven all together. That's the only way. But I see what you're saying. Are they, are they still selling? People very buying little, it? very little, and they sold it again on the marketing aspect about the hardness of bamboo, and I'm like, right, yeah. Well, that's the thing. See, they try different things, and what catches? They can sell it for a bit. They'll sell it, and then it just. I know, I know a couple of suppliers, but they don't even bring it in as much anymore. They just don't. So, what do you think happened to all the homeowners that bought into that train, and they did their homes that way? They did the entire home that way. You think they're living with it or they've ripped it out by no, now? I, by else? now, I for I sure. I think they've they, ripped it out. Yeah. I honestly think they ripped yeah, it out. Yeah, I think you're right. You can't sand it. No. You can, they say. But it does, it's not going to give you a different feeling to yeah. what's already there. Yeah. So I no, think they would have ripped it out. I think they would have ripped it out. Yeah. Yeah. It just doesn't make sense. You know what I mean? But this is what I mean. But that was, see, that's a trend. That got started. Yes. And then it was marketed a certain way. That's right. And then a lot of people bought into yep. it. And then it's dead and buried now. Marketing 100%. Pretty much. Yes. They're trying yes. to, I think I've seen some people bring in some more higher end, slightly different pattern based, maybe some slightly different stain based options. Yeah. But it's still, yeah, that stains, the darker ones, get rid of that repetitive pattern to it. Right. But I, I don't buy into the hardness of it. I don't buy into the energy efficiency of it. Yeah. I don't buy into any of that stuff. Yeah. right? Because I can only imagine what's involved to actually produce that product. Yeah. With the compression, the glues, and all this other True. stuff. And I'm like, True. I don't like Everything this. has its thing. Yeah. You know, environmentally friendly. I get it. It's very important. But nowadays with vinyls that came in and all that, it's really tough to control that. It really is. But the thing is there's no reason to and then for them to turn around and slap on a sticker that this is environmentally friendly product you're like i'm sorry but it's not it's right. like i'm choosing a product and it's just really simple it's right it, it costs something to produce this yeah and it emitted something to produce this right period yeah no, no different than the saw that's using electricity to chop it and then the compressor that's using power to install it right it's that's it it's the same th yeah Accept it. Yeah. Simple as that, right? That's right. And I think that there, we're probably shooting ourselves in the foot by creating chemicals or products that are supposed to protect it to make it last longer. But what are those chemicals really doing? So don't be talking this green yeah. train stuff to me when yeah. just accept the fact that this is actually... It's, it's here. It's, it's there. It's there. Simple. It's not much you can do. I know. Yeah. I know. You know, you're, you're always going to come across that no matter what. No matter what you do, like customers come in and say, where is this flooring made from? Where is this from? And what are they using? And what is the, you know, you, you be as honest as you can. But at the end of the day, it's like what you said. It's there. Yeah, but okay. So, and I I don't have a bone to pick with China when it comes to manufacturing, right? Um, I don't give a shit about that. Like everybody's product is manufactured there. If you really were to break it down, then you yes. want to be a hypocrite. Yeah. I bet you if you have children, half the toys that you purchase yep. are Chinese-based kind right. of product that are made together. So it's like, yeah. why don't you fight that battle then? Yeah. So I don't, I don't deal with that. But the thing is, like, Vietnam is becoming a manufacturing plant. Like, there's plants there for a reason. Yeah. And even if we have plants here in Canada or in, in the U.S., they're still using the same process. That's Everything's right. still being done the same That's way. Right. That's so right. yeah. it's like, you know, we can argue about tires not being recycled. And we're, like, we're talking about now putting tires into playgrounds. And people are, you're seeing an increase of kids having problems because yeah. it's in the turf and all this other crap. That's right. And I'm like, why aren't you speaking out about that? Yeah, then? that's right. So it's like everything is there. Everything is. So just accept it. So yeah. don't, I don't think it's a fair assessment to come in and go, no. where's this made? And all of a sudden that five letter word of a country yeah. comes up and it's like a red flag. Oh, at one time it was like, you said that word? No. Really? Huh? Ran. They just ran away from every product ran from there? Ran away. You said that word? You couldn't say it. So where's other, man? like what, what would they buy then? They would just stick with 100% Canadian, not vinyl, because that ain't happening. But 100% Canadian... Are Foreign they good wood. products? Are they good? Are they? Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah, sure. But the price premium is there. Well, it's through the roof. It's through the roof. Vinyls, you can forget about it. 90% of vinyl is made in China. That's how it is. It's, it's all just, recycled materials, yeah. isn't it? Like, it's just all plastics yeah. and stuff like That's that. That's right. Yeah. So 
then you get into the petroleum argument. Yeah. I was like, I'm done with this, man. Like, yeah. your makeup products, your, like, your high-end uh, fashion accessories, yes. they're all made there. Yes. They've all used petroleum yes. to make that crap. You know, you can't just focus on one thing. Like yeah. you said, you got to focus on everything if you're going to do that. Yeah. And if you do that, you ain't selling nothing here. Nothing. Then you're basically walking around naked and you're not taking the bus. You're not taking the train. That's right. You're not taking a car. That's you right. You can't ride a bicycle because yeah. the what's the energy attached to making a bicycle? That's right. So then stop that argument, yeah. please. Yeah, I just... No, yeah. I get it. I understand. Even yeah. during the, the funny years, they probably... You couldn't even say that name because no. nobody wanted that product. No. Because they probably thought it was saturated with it or something. 100%. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But then we try to build our own backyard infrastructure and it's too expensive to build it. Yes. Here. Which is unfortunate. Yeah. Oh, so many. We have the most amount of cedars. Correct me if I'm wrong. Western red cedar is, is Canada, isn't uh, it? And we have the bulk of it in, uh, from globally speaking. Yes, you're right. Like out west. Yeah. The world looks towards out west. Yeah. When it comes to a requirement for Western red cedar. Yes. I think the Washington, the northern states. Right. There in that area. Right. But we have I the bulk of right. it there, right? I think you're right. So it's like, and I know this for a fact because I was in Estonia and we we're having conversations there and, and people around the world were asking us about the price of seed. Yeah. And I was like, I got nothing to do with that. Right. Yeah, right. sure. We have the trees. They're there. Sure. But the thing is like, we still have a premium on, on that product. Yeah. Right? But we could be planting, I guess, other trees or something like that. We could be manufacturing. I know there's some flooring companies that are Canadian based, and they talk about the product. Oh, yeah. Harvest here, yeah. milled here, <clears throat> and then processed here, right? Yeah. A lot in Quebec. Quebec is majorly for that. What are they using? Uh, just wood. I mean, they, they use their oaks, the yeah, yeah, yeah. maples, right? They, they, don't, they, they have that big time in Quebec. They're known for that. So, yeah. No, it's still, but the price is... You know, double, sometimes even triple. We've got so much land. We could be setting up so many more trees here. I know. And then fabricating our own stuff, right? Do you know how many manufacturing companies to this day are trying to figure out a way to to manufacture vinyl here? What's the stumbling block? It's just, it, it's, it's too expensive. The environment? Expensive. That, the, 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 you know, the running block. And they're, they're just, it's just too expensive. You it's can't just, compete with the product that's coming never, in the container. Never, never, never. It'll never happen. It'll never happen. Because you will never be able to compete. There's no way. You're probably going to be on the higher end of the price point. Always. For a lower end product. And maybe at one time you could have made that argument where this is Canadian and this is from, from China. What you can't now, it's like nobody, it's all about pricing now. So it's really, really, really hard. You might still have that, but at one time it was more... Yeah. Right, emphasized more, right? Where if that's from China, no, I don't want it. I don't even want to touch it. What about the other um, off-gassing argument that sometimes comes up? And, yeah. and I'm like, listen, every piece of material yep. off-gasses. Yeah. And surprise, surprise, every piece of furniture. Yes. Drapery. Yep. Garment. Yep. Everything off-gasses. Yeah. So do you so want to argue can't, that? You can't just focus on that, like you said, right? If you're going to do that, then focus on everything. Clothes, furniture, everything. Here's the difference that, that I'll tell clients. How many times, outside of the times that you get drunk and you pass out and on the floor, and your mouth and nose is right next to the flooring, <laughs> versus how many times do you pass out and watch a movie on the couch? Right. Eat food on the couch. Right. Wipe your hands on the couch. Right. Spill food like, and kids spill. Right. And then you're interacting with the couch. Yeah. And you don't think a second for where that fabric no. is. And we know that that fabric is protected with fire retardant materials. Right. Um, retardant, not retardant. <laughs> retardant materials. <laughs> yeah. Um, but nobody thinks about that. Yeah. But then it comes to flooring, tile, paint. Yeah, they just focus they on just, that. They like, just, right? like, they bullseye to us and going, yeah. you guys are the bad guy now because you're using an off-gassing material. Right. And I'm like, everything in your house. Yeah. Yeah. So can you please, let's let's have an argument, like civil, discussing sure. everything properly. Sure. sure. Right? But the truth of the matter is that there's probably more in the furnishings. Oh, yeah. And I'm sure I can only assume, I don't know the furnishing world or the right. drapery world or right. fabric world or whatever. Right. But I can only assume a lot of that stuff is also coming from China. Yes. Could be a high-end company here in Canada that prides itself on Canada. Right. And it could be like the iPhone where it's designed in California, but it's produced in China. Yeah. So your couch, your rug, your coffee table. Yeah. Shipped. Yeah. 
and it came from there. Yeah. But I, my argument is that you interact physically more with your furnishings yeah. than you do with your flooring. You're so right. So You're why so are right. you beating us up yeah. when you should be beating? Yeah, every everybody should be looked at. Yeah, you shouldn't just be coming from. And if that. you want to make your own couch, then by all means, mm-hmm. make maybe a it's just chair and maybe that's it's it. just flooring is so mass produced so quick, and so I don't know, and that's why they focus more on that. I mean, that's my side of the business, and that's why I focus on it. But who knows if maybe yeah, furniture companies are going through the same thing. I can only assume that they are. Right? Who knows? Hey, homeowners and businesses, are you looking for top-notch tile and stone services you can trust and count on? Consider the expert tradesperson behind the Tile Guy GTA, Omid himself. He takes pride in delivering quality service and professional installation on time and on budget. From mosaics to large slabs to custom niches and miters, the Tile Guy GTA has you covered. With years of experience and a commitment to excellence, Omid and the team at the Tile Guy GTA are your go-to professionals for all your tile and stone needs. From full waterproofing solutions of every possible product to the finished grouting details, even a hint of design recommendations when the client needs to hear the truth. Call the Tile Guy GTA today, 647-716-5062, or email them at thetileguy.gta at gmail.com. This message is proudly supported by The Construction Life. You know, because well, I what know. are we going to start doing? We're going to start creating some farmer market furnishing, furnishing. That's right. Places to buy stuff. That's like, right. This is completely made out of uh, pine needles. Yeah. I don't, like, I mean, yeah. this is what I want to sit on. I don't understand. Right. Yeah. So I don't, I don't, I don't have that argument with the clients. I just trying to, if you want to educate yourself, it's fine. Yeah. yeah it took me gas to get here in the vehicle is diesel, whatever. I'm wasting rubber. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Whatever. It's all that crap. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But you can't point a target at us and not point a target at everything. Else. No, that's it's right. Fair to say that's that. That's right? right. That's right. Is the flooring industry like I could obviously there's bad apples in the flooring industry. Yeah. They looked at opportunities and it's not just the flooring industry. I think every industry that has an opportunity to be corrupted in some way, someone will come in and create a product that isn't good for people. Yeah. But they sell it at a price point that makes a lot of sense and people buy it and then there's issues later on. That's not the fault of somebody selling you a product. That's the fault of you not doing enough research to choose a good That's product right. for your house. That's yeah. as simple as that. Yeah. But I mean, like, is it a huge, I don't even know what the numbers are regarding the flooring industry, I guess in North America. No, How much are we spending? Like, I know that we, we've had other people on the show and elderly and, and manu- like modifying your house yeah. for the seniors. Right. Is like something like an eighty billion a year oh, business. I believe that construction wise, this is just construction. Yeah, I believe just that. Canada. Yeah, like you've got a, a segment of seniors that don't want to go cart it off to a home, right? And they want to outfit their home to fit them their new needs at that age right, bracket, right? Right, right. That's an eighty billion a year industry as a contract. Yeah, that's like that's what contractors yeah. today should. And be the kind. flooring part of it. I, I wouldn't even know. What I have it, no like, idea what it would be. I can only yeah, assume it's a lot. It's all, It would be a lot. Yeah, I would say so. So it would attract some bad apples to come in and create some really bad products. Of course. Fly it's, by nights. I think you want reputation. I think you want people that are going to back. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you've seen, I mean, I'm sure you've sold product more than once, the same product to other yeah. people, right? Yeah. But then you've gotten the feedback from the people that purchased it previously. And that's very important. And that's right? important, right? It's yeah. important because that not only it helps me tremendously because when I sell it again, right, you're so you're you're you feel comfortable with that one company. Yeah, like I got three, four manufacturers that I deal with. They're flawless. They're amazing. Yeah. I love I love working like selling their product because you know it just won't be any blowback. Yeah. Right. So you just feel more comfortable. Because they like back yeah, it and, sure. they, they, yeah. and you get, when it gets yeah. installed, that you see the value in it. Yeah. You'll probably get feedback from the installers themselves. Oh, yeah. They'll tell you whether or not the tongues or whatever is, are breaking yeah, off. Yeah, breaking or, off. Like or, it, was, it, it takes was, me longer. It was cake to, to yeah. install this. It was actually beautiful. Yeah. It was easy. It was great. Yeah. And it still looks good after a year or two. And then all yeah. of a sudden you're like, okay, well, oh, that's, it's that's the question that I ask all the time. You know, how easy was it to install that product? Or did it take you longer? Or was, was this one here easier or whatever? Yeah, no, it's important, right? I mean, you need to know that because especially when you're in sales, right? If you're going to sell that product again, now you know. There's no surprise. Well, because we talked earlier about clients are just basically choosing what's already been sold, right? So they've seen it in someone's 
Right. You know, you'll get homeowners that will photograph it, post it on Pinterest, share it with other right. people. And then you get another homeowner coming along going, well, I want that one. And then they find out that it was a floor that you probably sold that's yeah. nearby. Yeah. And then they'll probably go, well, listen, so-and-so bought this. And what's the feedback on that? Yeah. Then they, they're sold. Yeah. Simple. That's it. Then they get to choose it. And then now you have another case study, so to speak. Right? That's it. So now that, you know, I'm comfortable and the customer is comfortable as well because I sold it before. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think the future of his uh, flooring is going? What are we going to see in the next 10 years? It's going to be it's hard to say. Yeah, it is hard to say. Um, I mean, I find that, you know, vinyl is still doing its yeah. thing and it's strong. It's stronger than ever. Uh, will it change to something different? I don't know. Laminate. Is, is laminate still there? Laminate is still there, but they're so pissed that because they had this thing going so good. And then when vinyl came, it just wiped it away yeah but laminate i go back to the monkeys that got in and saw an opportunity yeah and they ruined it by creating a bad product right because i remember so many people installing laminate and i say within a year yeah the seams were breaking yeah then you had gaps yeah and they were constantly having to push yeah. and put it back together and i'm like that's a poor product yeah, they got lazy with yeah. it yeah they got lazy with it now they're trying to do waterproof laminate they're trying to compete with the vinyl. I don't right? think it'll work. Nah. I think I, vinyls took, took the market. Yeah. It all comes down to, right, the thickness because, you know, laminate was thicker. You can get a 12 mm form. But now that vinyl is starting to get smarter and going, yeah, wait. They're going thicker too? They're going thicker too. So they're going to that 10 and they're going, right? Laminate's price point is higher than vinyls, though, isn't it? It's, it's, it's gone down tremendously. They had, they had no choice. So they're competing that way. They're competing, way. right? So they had to keep it either even or some of them even had to make it go, you know, had to drop it a bit. They had no choice. What do you tell your clients and contractors? What percentage of extra, just in case? You know, you get some of them that say 10%. That's the magic number that you always heard, yeah, right? Yeah, I'm going to be honest with you. That's way too much. Yeah. Like, you know, if you know what you're doing with the cutting and all that, and there's not too many angles right four or five percent is more than enough yeah like i remember way back when it was always five percent for me who changed it to 10 10 i kept on hearing 10 like customers would even come in and say the, 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 should we allow for 10 percent?" i said listen it's an overkill really but again it all depends on the You're where it's going down much material the only time you waste material is if you want to decide to go on a bias. So if you go on a diagonal. That's right. That's when you start wasting a lot of material. That's where I you only 10, maybe even 15%. 15, right? Yeah. But if you're going on a straight run. No. Your first cut becomes your the end cut on the next row. That's it. That's just how it goes. That's with flooring. It's, you know, I mean, it's it. Now, if you have different weird angles in your home, okay. Then maybe you add a but little bit more. that's the 4 or 5%. Right. Right. Like that, and that, even the last job I did, yeah, I, I said, you know what, the hell with it. I'll do 10 or whatever. And I had two boxes extra. Yeah. Yeah. Because the cuts were bang on, right? Like everything yeah. was, it was just bang on. So I was like, I was just nervous, but they were cool about me returning it. Service charge and stuff like that. They were cool about it. I wasn't expecting them to return it. And we right. ain't talking a lot of money here. No. But it's just, I didn't want to hang on to it. So then I just said, okay, fine. This is it. Done. Yeah. But I could have got away easily with four or 5%. Yeah. No problem at all. Yeah. I wonder if you Google, Google probably tells you 10%. Probably. <laughs> probably. <laughs> probably. But I'm always going to stick to old school 5%. Because it makes sense. It's different if it like you, and also you go back to the layout of the room, you're 100% right. Yeah. It depends on how funky your house sure. is, right? Sure. That makes sense. If you good. got curved walls. Yeah. If there's an angle towards staircase, like all kinds of little. All that plays into factor, yeah. 100%. You got to do maybe a really tricky cut here or there. Yeah. Then that's a different world, yeah. right? Yeah. But if it's just straight room, square, rectangle. No. Uh, you're Doesn't gonna make have, sense. You could probably fit your offcuts in a grocery bag. Yeah. Right? That's yeah. how many offcuts you're going to have. Yeah. That's right. That's right. But it's hard. To, like, we got to always. The industry is always educating the client. Yeah. But the client is not always taking notes. That's right. Because they don't see the value in taking notes. Yeah. But we're always taking notes. That's right. So we can take that value towards the next That's job. our thing. I know. I know. And we, I, I'm surprised that guys don't get frustrated by the education process because they, they figure it's part of the sales process. Yeah. 
and we're all trying to take the high road and be nice about it. Right. Where, you know, you almost want to just be angry at them going, listen, man, that just like, I'm the professional. Let me. Right. Right. Yeah. True. But that's just the industry. That's how you're going to deal with it. I think yeah. you just have to spend more time and effort finding clients that you want to work with. That's right. You're going to get clients that are just going to beat you down to the very bare minimum. Bone. That's right. And at some point you're going to realize, do I really want to be associated with this project or this client do this yeah. work? Yeah. Maybe I don't. That's maybe, what it comes Maybe I'm not to, the yeah. right person for it. Maybe yeah. it's somebody else. Yeah, right? that's right. So I think right now in the industry, we're seeing a rash of people leaving the industry because they took advantage of it during the COVID years. That's right. And then they realize that's that happening to make a legitimate business. Now you actually have to strategically plan your yes. business. Yes. And they don't care about doing that. Yeah. They were looking for opportunities. That's all it was. That's right. So I would always encourage clients to find, you know, three good contractors. Yeah. That's it. I'm sure you could probably offer three good ones. If yeah. They, if they like, here's, this is who I would recommend. That's Speak right. To all of them. That's right. And then there's a product. You guys have chosen a good product. They're going to do a really good job. Yeah. And then get them to come in and do it. That's why me, it, once you find somebody that you're comfortable working with, it's very important to keep them. Because like nowadays, it could be tricky. They just leave on yeah, a dime? Yeah, they just they leave or they just don't have time for it. And they just, you know, they start it, they leave, and then leave it there for a bit. And then it's like, I, 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 got, I got my half of my floor done. It's a flooring job. Yeah. You start I got, it and finish it. Well, they start it because they're like, that, I know I have it. So now I'm going to go finish off that one and go, if you're on that job, you focus on that job, you finish that job. That's and then they I start think. the other job and they get that job and then yeah. they start another job and yeah. they get that job and then come yeah. back to the first but This job. is why I don't have time for that. I, no, nobody does really and not the customer or not even myself. So that's why when you find somebody that you're comfortable with. Are you getting young them. contractors coming at you and are you seeing a positive or negative from them? I'm seeing a positive. Good. I'm actually seeing a positive. I the the two the the three contractors that I know of, they're awesome guys. They love what they do. They love it. They literally wake up. They love it. I even got one of them. I got my son, which is 16. He's working with him now. Nice. And yeah, yeah, good guys. They get it. They get it. Yeah. They get it. Yeah. Good to hear that. Yeah. Because you're getting a lot of guys who are just not getting it. They're not right. seeing it. And you're you're probably hearing it yeah. more than I am. Yeah. But the ones that I that I deal with, oh, they're great. They're amazing guys. There's always opportunity, man. There's something going on. There's always opportunity. Yeah. The way you look at it is an opportunity. Yeah. Simple as that, right? Yeah. So um, you can get frustrated or you can figure out how to benefit. That's right. Build the opportunity from it. That's right. Antonio, anything else you want to share before I get to the 12 questions? No, that's it. This has been awesome. Thanks, man. No, that, this that, is we're been talking great. shop. And I, I, I know that the homeowners listen to the show. Yeah. They're quiet. They don't always reach out to me. Right. For the most part, some of them will reach out to me. And it's, it's always entertaining because they'll bring up something that they've been educated by, I guess, their Pinterest house Google friends. Right. And then they'll ask my opinion about it. Right. And I'll give them the real construction truth yeah and they're stunned sometimes they're like well that's not what i'm like well in the group of people that you're describing yeah not a single one of them are professionals and right. you're asking me and yeah. i'm giving you a professional opinion yeah if it's contradictory to what your friend circle are telling you yeah then you figure out who's telling you the truth sure simple as that so yeah. i know that they listen and they appreciate you know having the truth shared and and that's it so it's just i think everybody's very well versed in the fact that I'm not a fan of certain things yeah. um, that are trendy, so to speak. Sure. And I'll always speak my mind and I've never changed my mind on any of that stuff. Nobody's changed my mind on yeah. that, right? Yeah. I had a good friend. He just sent me this beautiful kitchen. And I'm a big kitchen guy that does, I, I don't like upper cabinets, right? I hate upper cabinets. <laughs> right. I like right. shelves because you use the same items every single day. Right. Human beings have habits. Yes. So, you know what I mean? And, and so we don't need these shelves up there. We don't need cupboards up there. Right. We need shelves, right? Right. And he sends me his kitchen, no uppers. It was just shelves. Beautiful hood, beautiful stove, beautiful island, beautiful everything, except for the bottom um, drawer cabinets by the, the stove area. Yeah. They were shaker with like some sort of grass cloth on the inside. Oh, panel. okay. And I said, you know what? The shaker's okay looking because of the grass material on the front of it. Right. But other than that, it was a beautiful white kitchen. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, it's gorgeous, man. Yeah. So I always, I stick with my guns and I just don't like. Sure. A good friend of mine, he just had his kitchen done and, and I just asked him how to go and he goes, it was great. It was wonderful. We're very happy. And he was telling me his wife's not 
fully happy. She feels that there was some missed opportunities regarding storage and space like that. Right. I didn't even get into the conversation about right. the white shaker or uppers or anything like that. Yeah. Because I already know it's white shaker. I already know it's uppers, yeah. right? It's just, yeah. they're, they're, that's how they are. Yeah. One day I'll go and take a look at it and I'll just say that. It's beautiful. It looks great. Yeah. Because he knows my opinion about it. That's right. Simple as that. So I like when they reach out. And then if someone's reached out and they're asking about flooring, hopefully they reach out to you guys, right? Yeah. Antonio, appreciate it. Floorzilla.ca. Find them on IG under Floorzilla, 647-671-9871. And his email is floorzilla at rogers.com. What's your favorite construction word or phrase? Uh, angle. 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 I like that. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> What's your least favorite tool? Tool? A jigsaw. You just don't know where the blade's going to go sometimes. Scared, man. <laughs> scared. Nothing that's scary is like putting a six inch jigsaw blade on. Yeah. Then it becomes like a little mini recipient. That's saw. right. That's right. With more danger. That's right. Uh, what do you miss from your childhood? Uh, miss from my childhood? Uh, not worrying. That's a eh? constant one on that yeah. question. Yeah, and we didn't have any worries then. No, eh? Our worries were if we got into trouble. Yeah, how much did our parents would find yeah. out? That was the worry. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's it. And then we just took it, and then we moved on. That's right. What construction sound do you love? Skill saw, chopping. Yeah, or no, cutting, cutting through. Cutting. Uh, what's your favorite beverage? Diet Coke. What turns you on and off in construction? Uh, laziness, turn off. And on? Uh, being on time. Yeah. And that's not on time on the time. That's You're there before the time. Yes. Favorite curse word? Favorite curse word? Uh, asshole. Asshole. That's a good one. Yeah. What's your favorite vehicle? Any mode of transportation? 1988 Honda Accord. I used I used to have, I used to drive one with the flip up lights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I used yeah. to love that car. What color are we talking about here? Like the gray. Gray? It was like a dark gray. That was the only generation they ever did the flip up. Yes. And they got that, I'm going to say from the prelude. Did the prelude come before that or that it came after that? I'm trying to think. I think. Because no, the prelude I, had it. The prelude was after. Was it after? I think it was after. So they took it from the Accord then? Yeah. It's funny how. I used to love that. Today's Civic looks a lot like that 80s after flip up. Yeah, you're right. Accord. Yeah, you're right. I, I, I see a Civic today and I'm like, that looks yeah. so much like an 80s Accord. But that, like, that was amazing for me when the lights went up like that. Oh, man. It's like a sports car, but without <laughs> having a sports car. <laughs> what profession other than your own would you like to attempt one day? Um, chef. Culinary? Yeah. Any specialty? I would say just plain pasta. Nice. With, yeah, that's it. What profession would you not like to do? Not like to do? Um... Brain surgeon. <laughs> I smell toast. Yeah. Uh, last question. If heaven exists, what would you like to hear when you... Uh, if heaven exists, what would you like to hear when God says... What? If heaven exists, what would you like to hear God say when you arrive at those pearly gates? Finally got it. Yeah. Uh, welcome. I don't know. Welcome. That's probably the one thing you want to hear. Yeah. You know, yeah that's one thing yeah antonio thank you so much man Taking thank you time. for having me this was great who's on the shop right now i guess they're my holding. wife okay so she's taking care of it and yeah, then you're playing hooky that's it and that's it thank that's you so it. much i appreciate it man thank you for having me great to meet you finally and yes Kat, and we'll stay in touch for sure for sure 100 percent. thanks antonio we're out of here